Good morning, Philippines. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you why Philippines is full of bums from America and Canada and the rest of the world. Stay tuned. This is the sad truth about expats from the West coming to the Philippines. So a lot of these guys, you know already, have come from failed marriages who say they're of traditional values. But there was a reason why their ex divorced them and it may not be because they were so really white. So with no reflection on anyone individually, let me just point out a few things that have a bad effect on the Philippines as a consequence. And probably the first and foremost would be beer. Yeah, you can get a Red Horse beer, 6.9% alcohol, or regular cost 55 pesos, which <clears throat> is less than like a dollar $1.30 uh, in the States. So, if you're buying that, you can buy three beer for the cost of one and the alcohol content is higher. So if somebody's on social assistance in America and can get out of the country into the Philippines, they can consume a lot of alcohol and that contributes to a lot of the problems here in the Philippines. Now, another item, actually, let's point out too, uh, the alcohol content. A lot of Americans, when they come to Canada, they, they say they can't handle the, Amer the Canadian beer because we're slightly higher by volume, 5%, whereas in America, it's 3.5 to 4%. So the alcohol content is higher in Canada and they can't handle it. So now they come to the Philippines and drink Red Horse at 6.9% alcohol, or you can get the export uh, only Red Horse for 8% alcohol. So there's much higher alcohol content and it has devastating results and it's a common common thing about uh, expats is they like the red horse now the next thing uh, which in terms of health concerns they talk about health insurance in the philippines and maybe getting uh, health insurance i'm 70 plus so i can't get health insurance here but even if i could <clears throat> i doubt i would um, it is expensive and part of it is and due to the health considerations from the people who come here. But having said that, the cost of medical procedures is remarkably low. You can get an x-ray for 25 bucks or a CAT scan for 40. So, and the doctor's visits only gonna cost you $15. So why bother with health insurance when you've already got it covered? A pack of cigarettes, marbles, 20 pack, piece uh, pack of uh, cigarettes. In the Canada is $19.02. In the Philippines, it's the equivalency of $3.75. So basically, you can buy five packs of smokes here in the Philippines for what it would cost you for one in Canada. So that's another health consideration. Now, they, statistically, uh, there are more people who freeze to death each year than die of the heat. So you're more likely to freeze in Canada or the northern states if you're homeless or you're stuck there or you can't afford to heat your home. The cost of heating in uh, in uh, North America, in Canada generally it's about $135 per month uh, when annualized on 12 equally billings. If uh, you decided to go with the same level of comfort in the Philippines uh, for air conditioning and have that on all the time, uh, it would be about equivalent. But a lot of guys can live in and acclimatize themselves to the Philippines and can reduce that expense. So that's another uh, myth busted. Gasoline is pretty much on par. Actually, it's a little bit cheaper here than it is in Canada because we have so much uh, carbon tax and government taxes on it. It's uh, about a dollar fifty-six 
a liter here in the Philippines versus a dollar sixty-six on average in Canada. Although it can be up over a dollar eighty-three in Canada, so it is slightly higher in Canada. That's per liter. And it should be pointed out though that the cars here run a lot further on the gas needed. And then as far as rents go, well, if you were looking uh, Toronto or Vancouver for a simple one bedroom studio apartment, you'd be looking anywhere from $1,300 to $1,900 a month plus your utilities. But here in the Philippines, it's quite often you can find a rental for as low as two or $300 American and a lot of times that would include uh, your Wi-Fi or electricity. It depends on who you're talking to. So the rent is actually about six times more expensive in North America unless you're living under some bridge somewhere. And the electricity is about the only item I can find on the list where it would be significantly higher in the Philippines. In Canada, you're paying about 19.2 cents per kilowatt hour. In the Philippines, the equivalent would be about 28 cents per kilowatt. But again, it depends on how much you consume. And if you're living out in the provinces in the Philippines, it might be well worth your while to get some solar panels and be off the grid if you can afford that. Hey guys, I just want to take a minute again to thank all the subscribers who patiently uh, listen to my videos. We're trying to provide content that is of importance materially and uh, communicated in a manner which is easy to understand. If uh, you feel that you're gaining anything from this, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. You can find savings here in groceries stores. It's a different kind of diet, but it's certainly a healthier one. There's not as many GMOs. You can get fresh food from the marketplace, fruits and vegetables. There are fruits here that are unavailable in North America, like sour soap, which is only found near the equator in a band around the world and where it is grown and consumed. It's been found that the incidence of cancer is significantly lower than the rest of the planet. And of course, big farmers are gonna be happy about that and you're not gonna hear much about it and no medical claims can be made. But there are some people that say that's 10,000 times more effective than chemotherapy if you can take that as part of your diet. But you've got other things like jackfruit, dragon fruit, papaya, mango, all these things that you don't find fresh like you do here in the Philippines, as well as a number of varieties of bananas, etc. Now, as far as owning a vehicle here, yeah, you can buy yourself like a Toyota Forester for about $35,000 American, uh, the equivalent here. But why would you? I mean, you can maybe rent a motorbike or a car for some short-term basis if you're traveling around the country. But for the most part, it's cheaper to just grab a jeepney or a Tracy cab or even hop aboard a motorbike with the motorbike taxis. Uh, it cost me eight pesos to go from here to the mall on a motorcycle if I just walk up by the front gate. So, yeah, especially being a senior, you want to really get involved yourself with insurance and licensing and the cost of a vehicle and maintenance and know where you can go, where you can get it maintained properly. So I wouldn't even consider that. Although we do have a vehicle, but that's more for the wife to get the kids to and from school. And I don't really deal with it much. So that's the brief rundown as to why the Philippines is like a magnet when it comes to the lower class North Americans and Western types who want their beer and cigarettes and have had failed relationships in the past figuring that they can maybe bully some poor Filipina. And there's going to be the complainers too. Same reason they got divorced maybe in, a, in North America is because they complain so much. And they're going to complain about it being too hot, too cold. They're going to be impatient about the immigration office, the lineups. Um, you, you'll hear that as a common theme amongst Filipinos, how impatient uh, North Americans are. Now we are more direct. We do tell, us, uh, tell it as it is, and that won't gain you a lot of friends here in the Philippines. But if you're not looking for friends, what's, what's the issue? So 
This is basically a cautionary tale for Filipinos that uh, the North American that you may be attracted to on your Christian Filipino website may be a drunk alcoholic chain smoker who abuses women so be very careful about that and uh, we'll let it go at that um, but if you're if you're some drug addict thinking about coming here I would prefer you think about going to Thailand because marijuana will give you a life imprisonment as a recent uh, foreign expat learned when he was growing his own little supply just for his uh, pain from a motorcycle accident he will now be spending the rest of his remaining years in prison so if you're a drug addict don't even think about it um, and uh, there are other places you can go but not here and other than that if you're under a bridge but you've got your check and uh, you are got your head half clear about you it might be a good place for you to park it for a while sit on the beach have a nice cool beer and uh, buy your smokes at a fraction of the cost yeah something to think about okay so with that we'll pack this one in and we'll talk to you next time bye bye thanks for watching